Hi, welcome. This is AIO Financial. I'm Bill Holiday, And I'm Ivan Sanchez. Thanks for joining us. We're going to be discussing emergency funds or an emergency fund, why you need it, what it is. So I guess let's get started. <laughs> yeah. And like the title says, it's like uh, we always talk about how we must always invest like the money that we don't expend or that we try not to not expend. But uh, what's also a thing is that we should have at least like a fund for emergencies on this case, because if you just uh, go on full investment mode and you don't keep any money at the moment that you have an emergency or an unexpected expense, uh, well, you won't have any money to to well to back that up and, and it will end up being the same you will be pushed to get into debt or ask for a loan or whatever and that's something that we try to avoid uh, do you or, have any or you may need to sell out of the market when the market's down your yeah. investment accounts are for long term and your emergency fund is for something that happens that you you don't want to run up credit card debt or you don't <laughs> yeah. want to get debt. So it could be you blow a tire or something happens to your vehicle. It could be something medical, could be something with your house or apartment that you need to fix. Um, to, or it could be someone in your family who needs some help, just keeping a little reserve. Yeah, and like like you're saying, I think that one important part of what you just said is uh, especially uh, medical emergencies. Since uh, right now, uh, if you got a medical ex uh, emergency, it ends up being really expensive. So I think that uh, at least for that, uh, how much will you recommend for us to keep up as an emergency fund? Yeah, good question. I think it also depends on your risk. I think there's some variables. The rule of thumb is keep three to six months of your expenses in a reserve, but it's going to depend on how secure do you think your job is. You know, it'd be nice to have a nicer reserve if you're at a job that is volatile or they do layoffs regularly. Um, so. I think it depends on the type of work. If you're self-employed, maybe there's even more of a reserve you should have because it could be something not only happening to your house or your car, something could happen to your business and you still want to make payroll. So, yeah. you know, that could be a reason to have more. Maybe you have really good insurance. You have auto insurance or really good benefits. They pay for sick time off or maybe they don't. And so yeah. if you get sick or break your foot, you're missing work and you need a reserve. So I think it varies quite a bit. They say three to six months, but it depends on your situation. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's really three to six months of your needed spending. So if you yeah. spend a lot of money going to the movies and stuff, well, if something happens, what do you really need to spend for those three to six months? Yeah, and like you said, it's um, most of it. It depends on the on the situation and on the type of things that happen. Because uh, I don't know if you get a flat tire or something, you won't be spending too much. But there's still an expense. But like we said before, if it's a medical uh, emergency or I don't know, a family member needs uh, I don't know a loan or whatever, uh, it might be. Mm, uh, a bigger quantity of money that you will end up needing. So <clears throat> on this type of situations, yeah. And, and also, like you said, it, you don't actually need to consider but like personal expenses like uh, movies or whatever, but uh, like the necessary stuff that you need, let's say, uh, oh, uh, paying for rent, your, uh, your bills, food, whatever, that's something that you need to keep on your emergency fund and i think that you can you can error in having too much so you don't want to give up investing because this money is going to sit somewhere secure it could be at your investment account but it's going to be in treasuries or something you can get out of maybe even cds or money market it's, yeah it's going to pay crummy it's not going to grow a lot because you right. don't want volatility you want it to be stable 
So you don't want to put too much in it because that money is useless. It's just sitting there. But you don't want too little where you're in a situation of needing to run up credit card debts or pull money out of the market early or, you know, tap your retirement fund. So um, I think it's an important piece to have. But yeah, don't go too crazy with it. But but yeah, build it up. It's good to have. Uh, yeah, and, and I think that most most of it, uh, you need to think of it carefully on like, uh, and it's something important that how much you will need it. And especially it, it depends a lot on your stability, your work, how much you earn, how much you spend. Uh, there are certain factors to consider before just, uh, okay, I will need, I, I will just uh, throw in six months of expenses over there and do nothing yeah. with them. Uh, no, no, because uh, like if you don't really need that much uh, it's okay just uh cut half uh keep it in the bank and the other just throw it up onto your investment account uh there's a, a good balance between both of them and i think that you need to uh, keep them on a on a good level both of them yeah yeah and if you have a secure like if you're in retirement you have a secure pension coming in Yeah. Well, if you get injured, nothing changes. I mean, your reserve isn't as much. And if you're not responsible for people, if you if you have kids, family, other people that are counting on you, then maybe build it a little more. But I think too, it's something you can build slowly. I mean, save into your your prudent reserve or your emergency fund save into your long-term retirement, save for some mid-term expenses. You don't have to um, throw everything, but, and if you use it, replenish it. I mean, it's yeah. there to be used, so don't be scared of using it. But if you need new tires, use that fund instead of getting debt or pulling from other things, and then just slowly build it back up to a place you want it to be. <laughs> yeah, because if you just yeah, keep the money over there and you, never want to use it because uh, oh it's an emergency fund in the end uh, th that money will be affected uh, that, that like we always said if you just keep money over there uh, inflation will eat it up at the end so just uh, don't be afraid to use that money if you need yeah. to repair something and you don't want to take from your actual paycheck okay uh, use the emergency fund or uh, use it for but like you said uh replenish it at like on a constant time be be careful on what you expend that on and always think about what your i don't know like there's a lot of things to consider before just uh, making a crazy expense it's like everything just be smart about yeah about what you're spending on i think Two, it's um, one other thing I thought of with how much you save. It's, it's also in a bank account can be, if you keep enough in there, you might get a little better interest rate or you don't want to have bank fees. So, you know, that might also help, help you decide how much would be appropriate so that you're not bouncing checks or having any bank issues. So you may keep a little extra than than just the minimum to get by. Yeah, um, and, and it, it all depends on your uh, on where you are, what you need, and then that's it. Uh, I, just, but I think it's pretty reasonable. I think yeah. three to six months of expenses. So if you spend two thousand dollars a month for rent and whatever else, uh, food, rent, all your payments. You know, we're talking about having six to twelve thousand dollars in the bank saved up. Um, it's kind of—I was thinking—it's sort of like a loan to yourself. Yeah. So you're gonna—if you do have an issue, you lose your job, or you, you lose something, you're gonna take from this, but then you get a zero interest loan back to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But uh, that, uh, I think to you know, for if you spend two thousand a month, having six to twelve thousand is reasonable. I wouldn't, if you spend two thousand a month, I wouldn't do much more than twelve. I don't see a real reason, unless there's uh, again a lot of risk, like you're 
people are counting on you. There's a lot of risk. You you're, have your own business and, you know, the it, it's real rocky what the income is, then, you know, then definitely put more in the buffer if you need. Yeah, and then there's a lot of factors to consider. They're like, there's a lot of situations that can just uh, happen. Like, well, like we just live the, like, last year with a lot of businesses got affected by the COVID situation. Uh, that's an example of a good fund to have over there in case you well, need that money. Uh, there's a lot of uh, businesses that got just shut down because they couldn't afford to keep paying or pay rent or whatever. They all, they just lost it because they didn't have an emergency fund. So, you know, that's a good point. I think more than saying, oh, it specifically needs to be this amount. It's just yeah. have something. A lot of people yeah. don't have anything. Just build something up and get in the habit of making sure you have a, a comfortable balance so that if weird things happen, like COVID or something strange happens, you're you're prepared and you'll be OK. And it's like everything, if you have uh as to your savings over there if you have money to fight any kind of situation especially unexpected things uh you will always be able to have a certain amount of control over them even if it's something unexpected so it's a good habit just to build up a reserve over there and well wish for the best and yeah, and, and I think banks are one option. Your investment account, again, you can put your extra money in there because within a week, you'll be able to get it out of the stable funds or the yeah. stable investments, get it to your bank where you can use it. Um, I mean, banks, again, they're horrible for, for earning money, but they're useful for doing transactions and it's, it's worth keeping a buffer. Yeah, and especially if if you need the money like uh, immediately. If oh, okay, if an emergency happened right now and you need to, the I don't know, you got a flat tire, you need to pay for it like right now. You have it over there. You can just go ahead and pay it instead of just. I waiting. agree, but I think in in a lot of cases you could just use a credit card and then pay yourself okay. back, or, or just make sure you don't hold it, just replenish it. But you're right; it's nice having some money right then because if you do need cash or if it's going to save you it's good to have yeah and like uh, especially now that you say it uh, that would pay it with a credit card uh i, I think that we should make a like a chapter out of it of using credit cards on the smart way because yeah, there's a yeah. lot that's there's a lot of good things uh, about using a credit card, uh, but you need to do it on a specific way. Just be careful about it. So that that's one good way to, uh, yeah, it's good. It's a, uh, it's something good to use, good to have in case that you need it. But uh, being smart about it, uh, because like we always said, being in debt, it's moving the opposite way of your financial independence. And it's something that we don't need. <laughs> Oh, and credit cards are horrible. They can be yeah. over 20% interest. They can yes. be horrible to get, get in debt with and they have penalties and, but you're right. If you just pay them off every month and never hold a balance, they're, they're great. They're convenient. They're, they're good. Yeah. And you, you ended up getting a lot of benefits just for you send them. And I mean, if you have a good credit score and uh, keep everything uh, nice and neat but, but that's right it helps build your credit score and some of the cards will pay you a little money back or give you yeah. discounts on something yeah 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 i think that, uh, that it, it will be nice to have a good conversation about it on the in the future to give out uh, yeah there's a pretty big variety of of yeah. options there too yeah. yeah i mean this is a pretty simple message we're sending but it is worth keep keep a reserve if you need a guideline three to six months, depending on your situation, but get something, get a reserve, because that, that does help. Yeah. yeah. Right. Or I it can that... help, or it can keep you from having issues. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, well, I, I think that we covered uh, 
the topic now it's it was something simple but good advice yeah it's it's pretty important i think it's good for people to do that build up a, a reserve so um thanks for listening to us we're aio financial fee only financial advisors if you need any help with anything financial related contact us aiofinancial.com and if you have questions write us we'll respond uh you can write where you find this podcast video blog and and we'll we'll respond to it thanks a lot for your time and to listening to us and have a nice day all right thanks bye bye